Photography is an endless hobby and there is always something to take a photo of, but sometimes it doesn't feel like that. You've flogged all the spots in your neighborhood, photographed all your friends and family, and tried just about every genre there is. Trust me, I know the feeling. Having now taken photos to facilitate over 60 YouTube videos in just over 12 months, I know the struggle of always trying to find a new thing to photograph. So to keep myself and you inspired and snap happy, I have come up with 101 creative strategies for photographers. Now, we don't have time for all of them today, obviously, so I'm just going to share five that you can implement on your next photo taking adventure. Let's go. So like me, you probably have a million cameras and you are busy scouring Marketplace and eBay in hot pursuit of your next perfect camera that will change your photography forever. I know I do it all the time, but here's what you should do instead. When you finish watching this video, go and have a look at your collection and really assess it and go for the camera that you wouldn't normally gravitate towards. For me, this is my partner's Leica R4S, which to me is just a big hunk of heavy metal that I have to use the full capacity of my brain when I am operating that camera. And it's a brand that I am kind of known to loathe. I have been called Lucy Lumen like a loather before. <laughs> but in spite of that, I thought, hey, why not pick up this camera, use it and see what happens? It felt weird, but also new and interesting and therefore kind of like a challenge. If I had have used my OM10, I would have just been staying in the comfy seat, cruised along and taken my usual photos. But using this Leica R4S, it really pushed me outside of my comfort zone and made me super aware of the photo taking process as it required more input from me and it was just different. Not to mention the Leica lens being a tight crop of 90 millimeter, which makes for an interesting challenge when composing your photos. So what camera do you neglect in your collection or maybe even kind of hate? I challenge you to give it another spin and see what you learn from the experience. Even if it just reaffirms that you don't like using this camera, I think that in itself is a great lesson. For example, whenever I shoot medium format, it always just drives home the point that I really love 35 millimeter and that is the format that I wanna work with the most. It reminds me to embrace who I am as a photographer and just be comfortable with what I like. Whatever you learn from this experience, I guarantee you it will be valuable. So definitely give this one a go. Never underestimate the power of repetition and consistency within any art form. It's what I believe gives artists their visual language and style. The more you play around with this, the more you will find your visual style and what really resonates with you as a photographer. So combining the use of restraints and color, I have come up with this banger of a strategy. Pick a color and go out and shoot only scenes that feature that color. You will probably be surprised while you're walking around how much you see this color. Now you have really highlighted it in your mind. This is an awesome one as it gives you a jumping off point with your photography and some parameters to work within. An example for me with this one would be the color red. Through the use of this strategy, I have been able to build up quite a large body of work that centers around just this one color. And it's given me a lot of direction in my photography and allowed me to theme things and really give meaning to my work. This doesn't have to be color. You can use this strategy for anything. So maybe you go out one day and you only shoot buildings, for example, or you only shoot things in portrait orientation or landscape orientation. You get the idea here. You can use this in many ways. I just think color is really powerful and it evokes different feelings. So definitely play around with that aspect of it as well. So pick a color and go for it. Don't forget to tag me on Instagram. If you do do this challenge, I would love to see what you come up with. So as photographers, we do tend to be quite a nosy bunch naturally, but we can also get tunnel vision and just be looking in our regular spots. Personally, I think not looking up as a photographer is a total crime. For example, buildings look amazing from the ground level when you look up and you can get so many different really abstract angles and compositions. There are also things like the windows of high rises, which might have little things on the windowsills or people, details that you wouldn't otherwise see. 
There's things like power lines, of course, and bridges, overpasses. You get the idea here. So just don't forget when you are in a usual area or even a new area to look up and around and see what's there to be captured. So if you are enjoying these tips, you can get all 101 of them via the link that I have pinned in the comments below. This guide that I have created is full of actionable tips and strategies that you can implement straight away and will really shift your mindset when it comes to photography. It's cheap as chips and is a downloadable and printable guide that you can keep coming back to time and time again if you need to get some motivation to get out and get excited to shoot again or you just want some inspiration. So check it out below for more info. And also anyone who purchases a print from my print shop gets a free copy of my 101 Creative Strategies Guide as a thank you for supporting me and my photography. So it's no secret that I am a big music lover and I really like to try and incorporate music into my photography where I can whether that's popping on headphones when I go for a photo walk or concepting the next music track that we will use in our YouTube videos that my partner happens to make all of the soundtracks for. This is a great way to get out of your head and just get into that flow state and really focus on your photography. It's something that I used to do a lot before I became a mum. I would just put my headphones on and listen to a playlist, walk through the city for hours and just take pictures. It's really therapeutic and it taps into a different part of your brain and then you can just let go of overthinking the shot and just kind of go with the process. Music has such a mood and vibe to it as well and you can use that in your photography. I think a lot of us are really trying to capture something in our shots and a body of work so create a playlist that really embodies that vibe that you want to create and put that on and start visualizing those shots that you want to get. So retracing your steps can often just be seen as revisiting the same location again and again, but really you are challenging yourself to see things differently. This really is a chance to see that location in a new way. So go back there, look, what's different, what's new, what's changed? How can you approach it with a new lens figuratively and literally. I know when I have been to a location with just a point and shoot, I am really excited to return with an SLR. And when I do, it may as well be a whole new location because I'm using different gear and getting a whole different look of it. I have a few of these spots myself, as I'm sure you do. And I hit them up when I know that I need a sure thing for a YouTube video or a film stock review. But when I return, I try and remember the shots that I have already taken. And I instead look for ones that maybe I wouldn't normally gravitate towards and think how can I photograph this and compose this in a way that I still like and enjoy and look for new things that have popped up in this area. It's easy to get habitual and stay in our comfort zone with photography and most of these tips are really about challenging yourself and setting these little mini tasks for the day. I have so many more in my guide that is available below and they're not all practical photography tips. Some of them are more on your mindset. So what do you think of yourself as a photographer? Who do you create for? Questions like that that really make you look inwards and assess yourself as a photographer and what you want to achieve, what your goals are, all those kind of bigger questions. So hit the link below to grab a copy of my 101 Creative Strategies Guide for Photographers and start challenging yourself today. Mm -hmm.